Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine opening series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we continue our investigation of the Budapest. Quite appropriate with the uh, Olympiad in Budapest coming up very soon uh, together with Torch version 2 and version 3. So in the last video we got a glimpse of what the engines are recommending against the Budapest and it's this. So let's have a look how it came out and let's also have a look at a couple of things along the way. I think um, in this video I'm going to show the main line and also a couple of sidelines. I'll probably do another video on some slightly earlier sidelines and then <laughs> just to make uh, the engine fans happy I'm going to show a game I played against Crazy Leela in this line. It was quite interesting. So d4, knight f6, c4, e5, takes knight g4, and now e4. Um, Alakin's move, and the engine favorite. Um, yeah, in the in a subsequent video, I'll have a look at the moves d6 and h5, Retty's idea, which uh, are not that great, but uh, you need to know how to handle them. Knight takes c5 is obvious, and then f4. Um, now, the main line is knight e c6 in this position. Uh, there's a couple of extra moves. Um, knight bc6 is mentioned. It's an option by Moskalenko. They're only with a, a single line of analysis. The engines uh, have no fear. Plus 2.37. Um, the key thing about it is a, a, a little shuffle. After queen f4 check, you go to d3 first. And after knight takes c5, you go to c3. So uh, the fact that the knight's no longer attacking these squares, you know, remove stuff like bishop b4 check, whatever. And after queen e4, knight f3. In principle, um white is just a um uh, a piece up lots more analysis in the uh, in the pgns but uh yeah that's good enough basically knight g6 the most dynamic option according to moskalenko um although i've always thought that this is yeah this was uh i've always thought this was a really poor move for black um now yeah moskalenko looks at bishop e3 and knight f3 the engines always want to play knight c3 um, they just want to be able to attack a bishop on c5 with knight a4, and they just want to get the queen side going. You know, um, if blank doesn't do anything, bishop e3, queen d2, castle queen side, h4, h5, off we go. So um, the main line here is um, bishop c5. I mean, it seems the most logical if white was playing bishop e3 to stop it. Um, if bishop b4, the engines were playing knight e2 actually. A5, just to stop um, A3 and B4, you know, chasing the bishop away. And now bishop E3. And after D6, A3, bishop C5. Now, this is quite a typical way of uh, playing. See this in a number of offbeat lines. But, um, well, there's quite a few ways of playing it. Leela just likes queen D2. Um, um, beat um, Torch, in actual fact, in uh, in this line. Um, this is also pretty nice for uh, for white. You know, it's um, I mean, you know, these things are not winning for white, but, um, you know, in a human game, but it's just very unpleasant. There's no reason why black would ever want to do anything like this. So, I mean, bishop c5 seems natural. I mean, if white was playing bishop b3 to stop it, why, why not play it? And then you've got a few ideas, but um, h4 was the uh, engine's uh, favorite. I'm just threatening h5, which is really nasty. So h5 is probably best. And then just uh, this sequence, bishop f4 d6 and bishop b2 and let's just pick up that h5 pawn it's um i mean yeah it's just not very nice for black i mean you know again you can always uh you know try and claim that you've got some sort of uh vague counterplay for what you're doing but um you know in in essence white stands very very well um bishop b4 check was my idea well i certainly um i didn't see it very in very many places and i thought it might be interesting i mean actually you know the engines just um just seem to think that these positions are something like 0.85 for white it doesn't look so disastrous to me um but you know torch beats stockfish convincingly you know and the other way around so yeah you know it's probably quite good i mean the, the key thing is again always you know in these positions that black just doesn't really have any counterplay here you know white's got a very nice bind on the center um, you know, quite a bit of time extra. C6, D5 is just not going to happen. And we just build up nicely, you know. And um, yeah, I mean, if Torch can beat Stockfish from this, then, you know, it's obviously going to be pretty good. Gain some space like this, gain some outposts, get in there. 
and uh, yeah, you know, the whole thing gets gets worse and worse. It's like it looks very much like a a nineteenth century game, really, where uh, you know Lasker's just uh, grinding one of those weaker players somehow. Um, so yeah, very difficult for uh, for Black in principle. I mean, I think in a human game you might say, oh, it's maybe not so bad. You know, uh, you could maybe get away with it, but um, yeah, against a, a strong positional player, wouldn't recommend it. So um, yeah, none of this is too exciting. So the normal move for Black has always been Knight E C six, and now Knight C three. This is the key idea. Not um, bishop e3, like uh, in the old days. We don't even bother about that. We go knight c3. And after bishop c5, we go knight a4. Now, just, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to put, uh, as always, um, well, I'm going to put uh, lots of PGNs in a, in my lie chess uh, study. That's replaced my uh, my chess base uh, bit because, yeah, my uh, all my files disappeared from chess base and they've never really... <laughs> Never really put much effort into getting them back for me. So um, um, I've gone on to light chess now. So gonna, there's plenty, plenty of analysis of different lines in here. I'm just going to focus on the main one. Otherwise, it'll get a bit too confusing. So knight a4, chasing the bishop away from c5, bishop b4, king f2. And uh, yeah, I mean, modern chess can look odd, can't it? You know, combination of knight a4, king f2 and uh, a rather airy central pawn structure. That's the recommendation of superhuman uh, strength chess players. But the crux, you know, of the whole thing is um, uh, a concept that modern engines assess superbly, and that's the lack of active potential in Black's position. I mean, um, specifically, there's there's not really any pawn breaks, you know, and that's all to do with the odd, oddly placed pieces. For example, the knight has taken four moves to move to c6, for example, and it's taking the best square from the uh, from the queen's knight, and also stopping anything like c6 to uh, to d5. And of course, you know. Those floating, mona, those floating minor pieces, you know, the knight on e5, the bishop on c5, they've been knocked away from their best positions. And yeah, you know, the white king has been forced to move, but the bishop's hitting thin air, and uh, white's got some more possibilities for gaining space on the queen's side with Tempe. And, you know, the king on f2, it's not really that exposed. You know, if, if a knight was ready to come into g4 or to e4, then it might be a different matter. But, yeah, that king's knight has spent four moves moving over to c6. So, you know, there's, there's, it looks a little bit odd for white, but the actual potential that black's position um, has, not that, um, not that great. And, you know, black's biggest danger here is to avoid getting squashed just by white gaining space. And, um, well, I particularly liked how um, uh, Stockfish played in this position as white. That was very, very powerful indeed. I'm going to show you the uh, the main game just to uh, show you how it is. Uh, one of the games I'll show you later with uh, Crazy Leela, uh, with me against Crazy Leela, was pretty crazy. <laughs> Apparently not very good for black, but, um, yeah, it was pretty tough to deal with. Um, but um, uh, let's go through the uh, the line that the engines consider to be the best when they're not uh, when they're not crazy, and that's bishop e7. So first of all, bishop e7, getting the bishop out of the way of uh, space gaining with a3 and b4, and preparing to play d6. Knight f3 from uh, from white, d6, and now the move bishop e3. Lots of different move orders here. I wasn't 100 percent sure. You know whether it um, it made a big difference, but this was what uh, Stockfish went for most of all, and it's very sensible just developing a piece. Knight a6, and now this move h3. So I think Torch's um, uh, idea was just to play bishop d3, and we go rook c1, and just develop normally basically with a nice space advantage. Yeah, it's a nice position for White, but Stockfish's approach was um, was rather maximalist, you have to say. So uh, castles, and now the move g4. And uh, you're really just, uh, I mean, look at the position now. I mean, white's on the fourth ranks, black's just back on the third. And it's not even like black's got a lead in development or something, right? I mean, with all these moves that black's wasted on the king's knight, uh, black isn't exactly doing great in, in the development stakes. Um, so white's just taking the opportunity to grab that space. Um, so b6 played by um, uh, by black because, um, yeah, if knight c5, then, uh, well, I mean, even knight c3 is not stupid, but knight c5 is also, um, you know, a little bit irritating here. e5 and white's got this nice uh, kingside pawn majority. 
yeah, these double pawns as well, and not that much space, you know, and uh, occupying d4 is not going to be that easy for black. So um, uh, b6 played to try and get in knight c5 and also get in maybe bishop b7, attack e4. Um, knight c3 from white. Um, g5 is another interesting move just to stop bishop f6. But uh, Stockfish was preparing, preferring knight c3. And after bishop f6, knight d5. And um, yeah, I have to say that uh, this is happening an awful lot in these positions. You know, just uh, the engine's just sacrificing a pawn, giving a pawn away just to keep things moving. No uh, worrying about that pawn on b2. So after bishop b2, rook b1, bishop f6, we go g5, bishop b7. And then, I mean, this is why I loved uh, Stockfish's play in this position. This move, rook b2, I thought was really nice. Rook e8, king g1. Knight c5, we and then rook g2, and we are completely teeing up against that um, that black king. So if you go knight takes c4, we just go bishop d3, bishop f8, queen c2, and I mean we're just teeing up against here. If you go uh, bishop f5, I just go knight h4, and um, well, it's um, all a bit nasty. The best uh, that the engines could find was to do this takes knight f6 but we're just going to pick up the exchange somehow so yeah no no problem at all there for uh, for white so um after bishop f8 that was what black played h4 you know just keep on going we're not worrying and after bishop b7 then uh, stockfish was already playing knight f6 check against uh, torch i mean this is pretty sophisticated stuff you've got to say but um pretty powerful as well knight g5 threatening knight takes f7 check Queen f6 and queen h5 here. And after h6, knight takes f7. A little bit of a repetition just to show you can. Um, and then bishop takes c5. And um, yeah, this was very powerful. In this position, uh, torch actually ended up playing rook e7. And then after bishop e3, well, white was just, uh, you know, clear advantage. f5 is coming in, followed by rook h3 to g3. Um, if you'd taken on c5, doesn't matter with what, just go knight f7 and bishop d3 and uh, e5 is uh, is coming in and is pretty unstoppable in actual fact. So it's quite sophisticated stuff, definitely agree with that, but you can see the, um, the general power of it all and uh, the general idea of just gaining space and just trying to squash black completely. Um, one thing I should mention in actual fact is um, there is actually also um, another line for white here, uh, which I look at um, in a different uh, PGM, and that's to play the move queen g4 here, just attacking g7 and trying to castle queenside uh, quickly. Um, also very, very interesting, but I found it, um, yeah, I, I tried it with uh, with white. I wasn't 100% sure. Uh, I had some adventures against Crazy Leela as well, and um, Crazy Leela was always always managing to um, to uh, to uh, to get me in some way uh, in that. Felt like Knight A4 was uh, was was really the most reasonable. But it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I I felt I had to explain the whole context to um, uh, to the Budapest in order to explain why this is effective, chasing away those floating pieces, squashing black, exploiting the fact that black's pieces are really getting in each other's way and there's no quick central breaks from uh, from black. Um, and what I really liked, you know, was this whole stockfish idea of just squashing black. And just trying to, um, um, well, just to to remove any possibilities for uh, for counterplay from the black position. It's quite sophisticated. I mean, you can also play it much more sensibly and much more calmly. That's actually, in a way, that I mean, that's quite a nice thing to do, really. You know, just to uh, you can just play something like this. Even knight takes c5 and e5, play it that way, and then just get ready to play bishop e4 with a a very nice and uh, pleasant edge in this position. That was Torch's favourite way of playing. But um, um, but yeah, if you can, um, if you're uh, if you're up for it and, uh, you know, play like this, then it can be incredibly dangerous. And um, well, I really just loved the way that uh, Stockfish was doing it with this rook coming over like this rook g2. And then later, this other rook will come to g1. Just incredibly powerful. And uh, well, I mean, you know, of course, for the Budapest, it's all about getting counterplay with black, whereas uh, this is very much, you know, uh, showing black that uh, that white's the one who's uh, going for the king. White's the one who's attacking, which is always very nice as well. 
So there we are. I hope that gives you a good um, feeling for it. Um, lots more analysis in the PGNs if um, if you want to go um, a lot deeper into uh, into that. In the next video, I'm going to have a look at uh, some earlier sidelines on move four for um, uh, for black. And then in the video after that, we'll have a look at uh, what happened to me against Leela. It was a great, uh, a crazy little game, really. So there we are. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you like it, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, take a look at my new books, Silicon Road to Chess Improvement and Reengineering the Chess Classics. And otherwise, hope to see you at the next videos. Thanks for watching.